when a residence accidentally caught fire. The family dog had to act swiftly to rescue the baby's life. What unfolded next is truly astonishing. Dawn and Stuart. A couple much like any other. Shared many passions and interests. Making them an ideal match. Among their shared loves was animals. Particularly dogs. Soon after moving in together. They acquired a boxer named Beanie. Initially small. Beanie quickly grew into a robust and powerful companion. Despite his tough appearance. Beanie was the gentlest and most affectionate dog Dawn and Stuart could have hoped for. He became the inaugural member of their budding family. But little did they know he wouldn't be the last. In the middle of March that year. Dawn discovered she was pregnant. While unplanned. The couple embraced the news with excitement. Eagerly anticipating giving Beanie a companion to grow up with. The pregnancy progressed smoothly. And in January of the following year. Dawn gave birth to a happy and healthy baby boy named Mason. Both Stuart and Dawn proved to be devoted. Loving. And wise parents. Willing to do anything for their son throughout the year. Mason progressed rapidly. Soon sitting up. Crawling. And attempting to walk. Throughout these milestones. Beanie remained his steadfast best friend and sidekick. Their inseparable friendship turned out to be not just cute and adorable but a crucial element that would later save the boy from a potential tragedy. Less than a year later. As they celebrated Mason's very first Christmas. Stuart and Dawn aimed to make it a special and memorable day for their family. They planned to spend the day together. Opening gifts. Playing games. And enjoying food. Although Mason might have been too young to fully grasp the festivities. The day held a magical significance that lingered in the memories of Stuart and Dawn. Heath and Beanie enthusiastically participated. With Beanie donning a Santa outfit that Dawn had purchased online. The sheer number of gifts for Mason was overwhelming. Creating a joyous and fantastic atmosphere. Beanie added to the excitement by playfully running around. Sending wrapping paper in all directions. After the festivities. The family enjoyed a homemade turkey dinner. Complete with champagne for Stuart and Dawn. Fruit juice for Mason. And a refreshing bowl of water for Beanie. Who had shed his Santa outfit. As the day wound down. Stuart lifted the tired Mason and placed him in his bed. Exhausted from the day's activities. Mason fell asleep almost instantly. Stuart opened a window to freshen the air. Gently placed the baby in his crib. And as he left the room. Beanie strolled in. Without hesitation. Beanie leaped onto the bedside table and nestled into Mason's little bed. Curling up at his feet and drifting off to sleep as well. With a smile. Stuart left the door slightly ajar. Just in case Beanie wanted to leave during the night. Stuart headed downstairs to assist Dawn with tidying up. Informing her that he planned to drop off a few gifts at his brother's house on the other side of town. Dawn kissed him goodbye and advised him not to be too long. She then settled on the couch in front of the TV. Before she knew it. Her eyes grew heavy and she drifted off to sleep, unaware that disaster was looming, while cleaning the kitchen. Neither Dawn nor Stuart noticed that one of the stove's burners was still on. A stray cloth had fallen onto the hot surface, smoldering before erupting into flames. Within moments, the fire had spread, engulfing much of the kitchen. It rapidly advanced filling the room and extending into adjacent areas, consuming everything in its path. The house, filled with flammable materials like wrapping paper, quickly succumbed to the intense blaze. Smoke billowed into the front room where Dawn was sleeping, and the thick black curtains woke her abruptly. Panic set in as she remembered Mason upstairs in his crib. Dawn rushed towards the stairs, 
shielding her nose and mouth from the smoke. But the ferocious fire had already taken hold at the bottom of the staircase. Making it impassable. Filled with terror. She had no choice but to flee from the house. Anxiously uncertain about Mason's fate. Unbeknownst to Dawn. As soon as Beanie. The dog. Detected the smoke. He sprang into action. Beanie pushed the bedroom door closed in an attempt to prevent smoke from entering and then leapt up to the window. Sticking his head into the small opening. With determination. Beanie used his strength to widen the gap. Eventually creating enough space for him to squeeze through. Fortunately. There was a roof not far below the window. With soft bushes beyond it that Beanie could jump into. Taking a deep breath of the cool night air. Beanie swiftly ran back to Mason's crib. With determination. He leapt in. Grasped the baby by the scruff of his pajamas. And. Using all his strength. Lifted him up. In a matter of moments. The raging flames outside the bedroom door would breach. Setting ablaze the plastic toys in the room. Beanie. Holding the crying baby. Climbed out of the window and carefully lowered himself down to the bushes below. Both Mason and Beanie sustained a few cuts and bruises. But these minor injuries were a small price to pay compared to the danger inside the house. From the front of the house. Beanie could hear Dawn's frantic screams. But the protective dog continued carrying Mason down the garden. Away from the encroaching fire. Unexpectedly. Beanie still holding the crying baby in his jaws, walked out into the middle of the road, placing Mason directly in the path where cars would typically pass by. This action might have seemed shocking and alarming, but it turned out to be a clever move on Beanie's part. He instinctively knew that the fire engine would approach from that direction, and by positioning themselves in the road, the chances of getting help increased. It was a risky plan. But Beanie remained vigilant. As if coordinated. The distant sound of a fire truck rapidly approached until it roared into view. Beanie nervously paced around the crying mason. Hopeful that the fire truck would notice them in the road and come to their rescue. Fortunately. The fire truck did notice Beanie and Mason in the road. Screeching to a halt. Two firefighters quickly jumped out to assist the dog and the baby. While the rest of the crew rushed to tackle the blazing fire. By that point. The house had become a fiery shell. And it seemed unlikely that anything or anyone could have survived inside. Despite the intense situation. Both Mason and Beanie emerged unharmed. With only minor injuries from their escape. A firefighter carried the young boy around the side of the flaming house to his hysterical mother. Dawn. And Stuart. Who had hurried back as soon as he heard the news. The relief on their faces upon seeing their son was palpable and heartwarming. The firefighter explained that Beanie had single-handedly saved the boy. Prompting the family to express their gratitude profusely. While they knew they could never fully repay Beanie for saving Mason's life. The heroic dog didn't seem to mind. He was content knowing his family was safe and happy. Earning him the title of the. Goodest boy. Of all. Now. It's over to you. What are your thoughts on this incredible story? Have you ever heard of such a heroic dog before? As always. We'd love to hear from you. So feel free to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Let's continue. Three wolves pulled the pony straight from the womb of a mare. It was fall and it was unbelievable what these wolves were doing. In the Tuscan countryside. Jesse Shelton owns the largest barn in the hamlet. And although the barn only has six horses. That's more than enough for the occasional visitor and the little ones. For whom he regularly arranges riding lessons. Jesse spends all his time grooming and caring for his horses. Because he spends so much time with his four-legged friends. The villagers often joke that Jesse was born on a horse. 
and while he wasn't really born on a horse. His upbringing was similar to that. The sayings are very similar. Born into a horse-loving family. Jesse was raised by parents who loved animals very much and he was raised by parents who hoped that he would take care of the stables when they could no longer take care of them. Jesse probably learned to clean the stable before he learned to tie his own shoes. His father always told him that horses are the best animals because they always reciprocate your love. He never doubted his father's words. Even decades later. He doesn't think that taking care of horses is a chore thing. But running a barn is hard work. And now. 64. Jesse can no longer handle everything by herself. His friends in the village encourage him to hire a steady helper. Which will help reduce his chores. After a few months. Jesse decided to give in and hired 17-year-old Nicholas to help clean the surrounding stables. Jesse shared their epic love of horses with Nicholas. And their shared interests made it easy for them to work together. Jesse has more time to relax by not having to do some of his chores anymore. And Nicholas has more experience and lessons as he hopes to one day be able to run his own barn. The horse and the kids quickly took a liking to Nicholas. He has worked there for many years. One day. They went to a supply store and when they got home an unexpected thing happened. They returned home to find their neighbors gathered in front of the barn. All with worried looks on their faces. Apparently. As they were leaving. A loud noise startled the horses. And Bessie. One of them. Ran into the surrounding woods. All efforts in vain. And asked Luke. The ranger. If he had seen a sorrel mare coming from him. And unfortunately the ranger saw nothing. But he promised to keep an eye out for any stray maras. And advised Jesse to return to the stables before sunset. As the forest might become dangerous at night. Jesse continued looking for the horse for several hours until he returned after dark. Which he did every day for the mare. A month later. With Luke's help. They continue to search for as much of the missing horse as they can. Both too scared to say what will happen to her in the woods. Luke promised to keep helping as long as he worked there. And suggested his friend go home. Jesse decided to leave matters to the rangers. Hoping his horse would return to him one day. Luke kept his word and went on the hunt for the horse. A few months after Bessie went missing. The ranger was in trouble. He saw an incredible sight. There was a familiar mare walking with a pack of wolves. It fit Jesse's description. He looked at the horse and the herd. Run happily together for a full minute. Luke figured he must be mistaken. And before he knew it. The unusual group of animals had disappeared into the forest. He was alone again speechless. But it really was an incredible thing. No one. Not even Jesse. Believed him because he had no evidence. And it was hard to believe that in nature. Horses and a pack of wolves as predators could live together. Or even run together. The forester thought he was crazy. And with that in mind. He started walking around with his phone. Just in case he needed to capture such a sight. As the weeks passed. Luke stopped his strange visions. I figured the wolves might be chasing the horse instead of running with it. One day. Luke was on his daily quest. Walking through a completely different part of the forest. When he saw a brown horse in the distance. From that day on. He knew that it was dangerous to run into the forest without telling his workmates. Against all caution he pursued the horse. However. So shocked by what he found that he was utterly speechless in a small clearing. In the woods he found a mare that exactly matched the description of the horse the old man had come looking for some months before. He immediately snapped a photo so he could confirm if it was the missing mare. He was about to return to the village when he noticed that he and the horse were not alone in the fields. There was a pack of wolves hanging out in the clearing. Looking like they were napping in the sun. 
He worries about the horse's fate. And he's thinking of a way to remind it. He squatted quietly behind a boulder. Avoiding the sight of the wolf. Thinking about what to do while watching. Luke shook his head dejectedly. When one of the wolves begins to approach the mare. He knows that if the wolves attack the mare. The mare will not survive. But he also knows that he cannot stop nature's course. Luke felt sympathy for the poor horse. Who had survived alone in the wild for so long. And it didn't sound like a bad idea for her to die while relaxing. He quickly sent a text message to his fellow forest officers. Alerting them of the wolf's condition and pleading for backup. Luke was slowly backing away. Preparing to return to camp for a formal report. When he heard the chilling sound of distressed horses in the clearing. This brought Luke's attention back to the clearing again. Only this time he saw a different scene. With the sorrel mare leaning forward on her forelegs. A position that indicated she was clearly in labor. She's pushing a foal out. But to Luke's shock even more. A pack of wolves surrounded her as she struggled. Frightened and confused again. Luke stalked closer. Crouching behind the nearest tree and watching as the wolves surrounded the mare. Luke didn't know what to do. They were going to attack her and her newborn foal. He wished he could have been more helpful to the horse as he watched the laboring mare stop making any noise. Collapsed from exhaustion. Her foal was half-born. But the poor mare was too tired to continue. And Luke watched from his place in the tree as the wolves scrambled with their paws between the horse's legs come and go. Luke had no idea what they were doing. But he continued to watch them in awe. What it did next was truly unbelievable. The wolf pulled out the half-delivered pony and gently placed it next to its mother. Leaving it completely free. Luke sat behind a tree watching the wolves gather around the mare and began to lick the calf clean. Just like a mother would. Luke almost screamed in shock as these dangerous-looking predators cared for the pony as if it were their cub. Shortly after the mare regained consciousness. The wolves surrounded her and howled. Which in some ways could be translated into a celebratory scream. He realized that the wolves had made a new member of their pack. And he sat behind a tree and waited for some time until the mare and pony had regained their strength to straighten their legs. And they both ran into the forest. An hour later. When backup finally arrived. Luke was still in disbelief as he recounted scenes that these men were unlikely to see for years to come. Luke has been looking for this unusual group ever since. But no matter how hard he looks. He never sees them again. Luke never stops telling his story. But he believes more than anyone that nature is wild. Beautiful and unpredictable. Do you think it is strange that the wolf helps the horse give birth? Would you believe such a story without evidence? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.